Hi and welcome to my very cold garage where I can reveal stage one of my 20 pound workbench build. So when I said I'd be building a workbench for 20 pounds um, I thought I was being a little bit over optimistic but uh, so far so good we haven't spent too much. This uh, first stage was building the basic structure of the bench so we've got the, um, the stand, four legs, four uh, stretchers and we've got the laminated top and uh, in the next few minutes I'll be showing you how I made all that. To build the $20 bench I need to scavenge some materials. My first find is in my own garage and it's over there. Now all six of these were scavenged from a student I had on the Saturday workshop around about six, seven months ago. So thanks Joe for those. They have nice 22mm boards on them. Uh, they're very strong, very difficult to get apart. So uh, I'll be talking about a method of how I do that as well. Another find I've had is this uh, oak flooring. It's engineered flooring, hardwood ply, which is about uh, half an inch and then quarter of an inch of solid oak on top. I've also managed to find some dark red Maranti, which has come from some window frames and door frames. And I've also got some plywood. That's 18mm ply and some thick softwood decking and I'm hoping that's going to be enough for the whole job. Fed up with the effort involved and also the number of boards that ended up being split when they were forced off, I came up with this very simple method using a jig and a plug cutter to simply isolate the nails from the boards. virtually no chance of the board splitting and you're left with neat holes that can easily be plugged. I like to go over any rough scavenged boards with a good quality sanding belt. It just makes sure that any uh, rubbish that's on there that might damage my plain irons is removed. After that I cut to rough length either by hand or using a chop saw. Show surfaces obviously need to be cleaned up with a plane but also where I'm going to be laminating, a nicely plain surface will glue much better than one that's just come from the sander. Straightening and squaring the edges for the laminations will also mean that it's a lot easier when it comes to flattening the bench top, squaring the legs and marking out all the joints. I'm going to use countertop connecting bolts to uh, join the two end frames of the base together cross holes at each end of the rails will allow me to get a spanner in to tighten them up. I'm going to be chopping the mortises for my end frames but it's very easy to build in a mortise as you laminate the legs. Just leave an accurately spaced gap at the right position. Using a waxed sample of the tenon during the glue up could be a real advantage. I've cut and thicknessed all the 16 laminations that are going to make up my laminated legs. I've cut bottom rails to rough size, top rails to rough size, and the front and back stretchers to rough size. And I've also thicknessed all the boards that are going to make up my laminated top. It's also worth mentioning that uh, if you get pallets that are all the same, chances are the thicknesses of your boards are going to be so close that you could actually get away with uh, not worrying about thicknessing them. As long as you've got some good clamps to pull it all together, you can square up the finished assemblies uh, when they're glued up. Now the legs are made out of uh, laminations, all like this one here. But to actually join the stretchers along the front and back, what I'm going to do is uh, just make a little cut in here, take a little section out, about a half an inch deep, and uh, that effectively give me something like that, into which the front stretcher can just go in. So leave me a mortise when it's all done that the front stretcher can sit in nicely and that'll stop it from cupping. And then that'll receive a bolt through, something like so, just to hold it in place. One of those notched boards is placed in each of the leg laminations 
to produce the mortise for the stretchers. I've just been working out my clamping procedure for laminating all the legs. I'm doing them all together, which is going to be a bit of a push, so um, I probably won't video that bit because I certainly won't be able to talk you through it as I'm doing it. So I've got four legs, which is 16 laminations. I've got a couple of calls down here with sash cramps across. Um, I'm clamping the boards to keep them aligned in this direction as well, at both ends. And I've got F clamps and calls to go on the top edge of each of the legs. So, let's get going. So with the legs laminated and mortised for the stretchers, let's move on to mark out and make those stretchers. So I'm laying out for the knockdown fittings and interestingly enough the stretchers just about wide enough that I needn't um, drill a hole right through. I will do on the back rail but on the front rail I'll try and leave it blind. top rails at the sides which are going to be supporting the top are going to be fixed in uh, bridle joints whereas the lower rails will get a double tenon As you can see here, you don't necessarily have to drill out for your mortises, you can chop the whole thing if you like. It's always a good idea to chamfer the feet to stop them splitting as it moves around the floor. With all the mortises completed, it's time to lay out for the tenons on all the rails.
Time for a dry fit before committing to glue. The bench top is made up by laminating pallet boards. I've lengthened it to the, more than the length of a pallet by having a join and staggering the joins in the length. Uh, the front and rear sections were made separately and I rough flattened them before finally adding more laminations to create a well in the centre. Inevitably, once the top had cured, there was still a little bit of flattening to do, uh, but it didn't take me too long with my number four. That's going to take me forever, well not quite forever, but quite a long time, so as soon as I'm still recovering from my cold, I'm going to use a track saw. So everything that's in the build so far has come from the uh, pallets that I started with and for what I've actually built at the moment the only waste is contained in this one bag so not an awful lot basically just shortening a few pieces and tidying up a few edges now we'll be using some of these probably to make some of the accessories so I'm not throwing them away just yet now close inspection of the top does show some slight gaps where I can get my nail into but I think for a workbench that's not a real problem and it just shows that I uh, didn't need to spend much time really processing the, the wood from the pallets. Um, it was really more important to get the bench together and I feel where I've laminated here I've got at least two thirds of every surface nice and tight together and it makes for a very sound bench. So those gaps I don't think it'd be a real problem. I could easily fill them if I want to, and I may do so later on. On the face of uh, the bench, you'll also find some holes where we took out the nails. Those I will be plugging up, uh, probably in a contrasting hardwood. And again, that'll be in a future video. You will notice I've got a big hole in the middle here. That's going to be my tool well. At the moment it goes right the way through, but we'll be putting a, a base in that and uh, something a little, little different as well, which hopefully you haven't seen before. That well is perfectly deep enough to take a plane on its side, hammer, etc. So it should be quite useful. We've also got a really stout back member here, which uh, often you don't get when you've got a, a tool well. This is about four inches wide. And so I can clamp onto that, I can plane on that part if I'm using this part of the bench for something else. So I think that would be really useful. Now the bench top rests on the, the top of these rails on the two end sections of the base. It's held above the top of the legs. And there's just a slight concern with expansion and contraction going on. I thought it would be better to do it that way. Uh, it's resting within a, 
a groove through the bottom of the bench top. So it's free to move backwards and forwards, except we want this to be flush at the front. So what I've done is I've put a, a dowel, if I can pull it apart there, put a dowel in, in here, which just locates the very front, keeps that flush, and then as this expands and contracts, it all goes backwards and hangs over the back legs. The lower rail on the sides has a double through tenon, uh, which is a very strong joint, but you could use a knockdown fitting. The front stretcher and rear stretcher, uh, I've got a tenon through into the leg, and the knockdown fitting, as you can see here. Now these um, pallets were all softwood, so the bench is entirely made out of softwood, and that brings uh, a couple of problems, mainly the weight. The whole of this bench comes in at 65 kilos, which is a little bit light, and so you might have problems with it sliding around the floor. Uh, to overcome that though, you get some of this shelf liner material, grippy material, put a pad under each foot, that'll help enormously. And I've also put these stretchers in at the same height all the way around the base, so it's very easy to screw in a shelf underneath them, uh, fill that shelf with bags of builder's sand, you can easily get 100 kilos worth in there, and then you can put a shelf on top for your normal storage. That bench won't go anywhere. The other potential problem with having a softwood bench is um, marring it, denting it, when you're doing chopping operations on top. Now you should never be chopping directly on, on top of any bench because you're going to mark it, but on softwood obviously the damage you can do is more extensive. So really, just use a bit of hardwood or a piece of ply as a sacrificial base when you're doing your chopping. So that's how I got to this stage and in the next uh, video or two I'll show you how I make some accessories for this bench. Now obviously at the moment it's got nothing to clamp any work on it so we'll be dealing with that and it's got uh, no real storage. So we'll be building a tool well in there and possibly putting a shelf on. So join me next time. Cheerio!